Lindsay? The 55 of Michael Walter. We told you he was finally getting comfortable, finally able to drive up around that high line. He will come in. They wanted to wait a little bit. They decided to uh, tighten him up a bit and give him four tires. Bill? There is your race leader, Jimmy Johnson, out front in Michigan. Will it come down to fuel mileage? We'll have to play it out here and see. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Carl Edwards is chasing Jimmy Johnson for the race lead here at Michigan with 36 laps to go. Johnson in the 48. Carl Edwards. That was to uh, Almendinger. Yeah, yeah, that was to the 84 car. The 84 car got a good run on him. He thought he was cleared the 84 car coming out of two, and the 84 car just drove back by him down the back stretch. This is for the lead. Carl Edwards on the high side of Jimmy Johnson. Wow. Recaptures the lead with 35 to go. He just powered around. Right he made that look I mean, pretty easy. Yeah, he is strong right there. Marty, what's up with Kurt? Well, you guys talked about you had everything right on this last stop. Kurt Busch running fourth, has to get that up. Could be a loose lug nut. He said every time he went into the corner and hit the brake, it was a big vibration. Four tires, and hopefully all the lugs tight this time. Matt. At this point, Jimmy Johnson was told by Chad Knauss, all we need is a caution, and we are good to go on fuel. And then about five seconds before he gave up the lead to the 99 of Edwards, he says, you need to save me fuel. Hence, dropping back and going into fuel conservation mode. He really has to save him a lot, doesn't he, Matt? Matt, I, Matt doesn't know. I, he, I, he thinks he knows. Yeah, sure. I would think he would. But the one thing, and Larry can speak to this more than, than probably I can because you, you don't notice this. You start off on fresh tires and you're running 4090s, 4120s. By the end of the run, you're running 4240s, 4250s. Losing that second on the racetrack automatically saves you some fuel because you're not able to go to the gas as hard. You're feathering into it. You're easing out of it earlier. So naturally, I wonder if the... If, and Larry could probably ask this if, we, if he goes to his calculator. Have the fuel stops grown longer, or has the fuel mileage gotten better as we've gone through the day just because of slower lap times? Time for a pit summary brought to you by NASCAR Hot Pass, only on DirecTV. There's Martin Truex Jr. Runs in the third spot. Now let's go back and look at his most recent pit stop. And again, as we've said, you want to be perfect here. Watch the right front tire changer. Hits all the lugs and then goes around and has to hit at least one a second time. And that may have been a second. And then he goes back out on the track and look how close this is. That's just pressing right there. He is just pressing to make up whatever time he feels like they may have lost on pit road. And, and what, what ground he lost early in the race. He's driven from the back to the front on a couple of occasions in this race. And he's only two and a half seconds behind, but there are just 32 laps to go. Lose a second in the pits, he can't make it up on the track. Our next tell race view, you can see it at nascar.com. But you go for a ride with any car you want to pick. Right now, Carl Edwards is the race leader. Jimmy Johnson runs second, Martin Truex Jr. third, Tony Stewart fourth, Casey Mears is fifth. Well, it could come down to fuel mileage here. Let's uh, see what some of these teams are thinking. Lindsay? Bill, it's going to be a good fight, but I'll tell you what. I just asked crew chief Bob Osborne. He looked at me and he said, yes, we are good to go. I thought that they might come to a point where they would be about two or three less than they needed, but he said, no, we can handle it from here. Ralph. Oh, the one car's good, Lindsay. He's very good on fuel, and he's very fast. Pick it up four to five tenths a second per lap, Matt. Jimmy Johnson has dropped back to third, still trying to save as much fuel as he possibly can. At this juncture, probably around two laps short on fuel. Meanwhile, the 20 of Tony Stewart, they are good to go to the distance. 
Marty, just talk, just talked to Darian Grubb, crew chief for Casey Mears. He said they are close. I said close enough to go for it. He said absolutely. Remember this team won Charlotte on fuel mileage. The car they won with that day, that day, same one they're driving today. Matt or Ralph? Dale Earnhardt Jr. running back in seventh position in car number eight. He's good on fuel, but he's got a bit of a ways to go right now to catch the guys in front of him. There you see Junior, 21 seconds behind the race leader. Carl Edwards' longest run today is 45 laps. He last pitted on lap 158. That means he'd have to go 42. Jimmy Johnson's longest run between pit stops today, 41 laps. He stopped with 51 to go. Here's our Miller Lite race back. Carl Edwards finished second at Michigan. Last August, made his debut here as well. And Carl looking for his first win in 52 races. He's out front right now by almost two seconds over Martin Truex Jr. The fuel mileage game playing out at Michigan. 21 laps to go here at Michigan. Carl Edwards is the race leader, but Martin Truex Jr. in that one car is charging. Yeah, he's he is making ground now. Let's see, that time by, Carl Edwards was a little bit quicker, but I'll tell you what, uh, to me, I think if the one car gets any clean air, he, he's, he's a bunch faster than Carl. It seems like when the one gets around another car, he struggles. Now we'll see if he can run the 99 down now that he's got by Strong. And when the one car can run his groove, which is three inches off the wall, it appears to be, <laughs> he makes really good time. He's had to, to pass some lap traffic. You saw Sterling. Sterling knew he was running a high line, so Sterling went low and let him go around through three and four. Other guys have forced Truex to go to the bottom, which slows him down. Jimmy Johnson runs third. He's about four seconds behind the race leader. Larry? Well, here's the deal with Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car. He's not racing Carl Edwards. He's not racing Martin Drex Jr. With 20 to go, he's racing the fuel. But here's the thing. For the big pitcher, he has an 11-second lead over fourth-place Tony Stewart. So what they need to do is slow him down right now. Watch that lead over Tony Stewart and see if he can make it. But I will say this. He's going to have to run seven laps further than anybody in the garage Jerry told me they could run this morning. And what does that tell you? That that tells me they probably hit pit road a little too soon while ago. Yeah, that's, you know, seven laps farther at this place. That's 14 miles. That ain't going to happen. You ain't <laughs> saving that much fuel, Larry. <laughs> You can ask me, but <laughs> I don't think I can do it. I can't pedal that good. <laughs> you know, and I'm not sure anybody can. Unless they've just miscalculated their fuel all day long and they've got something totally different than everybody else. That's phenomenal. That's, I even think that. That's 16 at Greg Biffle well off the pace this afternoon. Larry, you got some more? Yeah, here's the thing I want to say, guy. You might as well go for it because you know what? If you come to pit road and you top off, you're going to go well off the lead lap. And right now, I've been watching it, and he's been running a half a second to three-quarters of a second slower than those other guys. And right now, he has stretched it out to almost 12 seconds over Tony Stewart. Shorten the racetrack up, slow the pace down, maybe you'll make it. Now, I, I agree with you 100 percent when you're that far off you may as well just run as hard as you can and because if you got to stop I mean you're not going to save that much fuel and if you got to stop you're you're out of luck so race it Edwards now with Martin Truex Jr. really closing in but you saw the 13 car traffic played into that yes, right there did. where they run up on the 13 car more on the one from Ralph Martin Truex Sr. sitting, or standing, I should say, high up in the pit box, watching his son, closing in on leader Carl Edwards here at Michigan. Martin told me earlier this week that he never really realized how much sacrifice his father had made before he got into NASCAR's next Hell Cup division just to get his son racing to make a name for him. And now that he's here, Martin would love nothing more on this Father's Day than to deliver his dad a victory in person. And even if he doesn't, it's another strong run for Truex and another big day for him and his guys at DEI. It's Edwards, Truex, Johnson, Stewart, and Mears in the closing laps at Michigan. 
12 laps to go at the Michigan International Speedway. Carl Edwards has not won in 52 races, but he's out front in the closing laps this afternoon. Time for our next tell, getting it done call of the race. This is where our two experts call the car they believe is going to win. So Wally Dollaback, Kyle Petty, time for the next tell call of the race. He said, I, I agree with Wally. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to ask Larry because you said experts. So, um, and I'm going to go with this guy right here, the number one car. I mean, these guys have been on it all day. They've been to the front, to the back. Uh, they got sideways and the back stretch tore the car up a little bit. Now he's in second. I'm a little bit surprised right here. I, I don't, I don't know if Carl just stepped it up when he saw that one car behind him, or all of a sudden QX has got some issues because he's he's following somebody. Yeah, I'm surprised they, also. So you know, all of a sudden uh, it's just like he hit a brick wall. Yeah, well, I'm surprised. He ran up there and got on his bumper and then hadn't been able to do anything with him. But the call of the race is still. Like you said, he's been back, front, sideways, backwards. He's been everywhere. <laughs> Two tires, four tires. He's done it all today and still still recovered from it. Hang on a second. I got McReynolds on speed dial. Larry? All right, guys. I'm going to go with two race teams. I'm going to go with the 18, and I'm going to go with the 5 team. Two teams that were heavily affected by an announcement in the middle of the week, and there they are sitting there running 6th and 7th with two drivers they know they will not be working with at the end of this season job, Larry. That's a good call. That's a different way of looking at it. All right. Ralph, what are you up to? Now, the problem for Martin Truex Jr. is he just brushed the wall. That's where he lost a ton of time. The car's been getting tighter. Brushing the wall just made it even worse. He was better in three and four than Edwards and only losing speed off of turn two. And in fact, he was picking up a hundredth or so each and every lap. He's found his rhythm again. He's starting to close in. But just as he's had enough time, are the laps running out? Lindsay? Ralph, and you're talking about him brushing up against the wall. That's what this 99 crew knows. Maybe helps them out a little bit. Carl Edwards can't go the remainder of the way on the fuel he has. And right now, I'm standing in his pit box. You can see up on the pit box is Jack Roush, of course, owner of the team, talking to Bob Osborne, his crew chief. <laughs> And, of course, the man that you did see there was Tom, the man that will shave his beard if Carl Edwards win this race because, of course, as we told you, he hasn't won since November 6, 2005. So you can bet that Tom, the pit runner, is going to go grab that razor and head on to victory lane. Now, about that saving fuel thing for the 48 car. Couldn't make up those seven laps. Boy, he's really slow. He may have run out yeah. of it. Nice and smooth up here, bro, Jimmy. Do not try to start it until we plug it in. Do not yeah. try And now he has no tack, right? Yeah. Matt? Bill, Jimmy Johnson cannot believe it. He is out of fuel. Unbelievable. Trying to make his way down. Like you mentioned, the car is silent. No tachometer. Now trying to not make his day any worse. But they are going to have to put in some fuel. Lap 193, count this on the day for Jimmy Johnson. He was running third. Remember we told you they're at least two laps short. They needed that caution. They never got it. The car now refired. Rich Gutierrez is going to put a little more fuel in. Boy, what a tough break for Jimmy Johnson's 40s. What a great car today. You got fuel pressure. You hear him say you got fuel pressure. He's squirting, it. 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 squirting some gas down. Look, Jimmy Johnson may not believe it. They may not believe it, but we sat here and talked earlier, 14 or, or two, seven laps, 14 miles. When he come down pit road, look at the scoreboard over there. It was 192, 93 laps, seven laps short. Larry called it. Everybody else knew that it was going to happen. There's no way you can pedal that car and save that much fuel. And that graphic is basically just a, a calculation done mathematically, but we talked about the long runs Carl has made today, and Lindsay said that they believe they're good to make it to the finish. And there you see the stats she was talking about. 52 races, ago. 52 races ago. Had four wins in 2005, winless last season. You heard the spotter say, David knows you're coming. We want the high side. What he's saying is that's David Reagan in front of him, and they've already talked team-wise to give him the high side. That's where Carl wants to run, as you see the 48 car go by him. The six um, and the 99 teammates. up to Ralph 
Well, they switched it to defensive mode now, Bill. All they're going to do when he brushed that wall, he got out of his rhythm. The car just has not gone back to the same. So they're just going to hope that maybe something goes wrong in the fuel side of this story for the 99 car. They keep telling Martin, forget about it. Nothing you can do about it now. Just watch the fuel, and let's hope that something goes wrong with the 99. So Truex runs second. Tony Stewart started 41st today. Had a major incident in the closing laps of happy hour here on Saturday. Has worked his way to the third spot. Outstanding day for Tony and his guys on pit road.